casting it on a Suchi. Um, and he, and he, this opponent of mine was as adamant that my creature still would be sacrificed. I said, no, uh, the, the, I, well, I mean, I was polite, but I was like, I, it's not the case because the card doesn't read that way. And let's go look at some rulings about this. And the, the accurate ruling on it is that the sacrifice is the, the, the placing of the new artifact on the board and the sacrifice are both effects of the resolution of the spell. And therefore, meaning that if the spell is interrupted, the creature has not yet been sacrificed. And also it means that if, say, Suchi went to the graveyard, it only goes there when the spell is resolved. So that means any mana you might get from Suchi is not available until after the spell resolves. Right. And that's right. I, I, was, I was trying to explain that. And, uh, you know, it you know, I, I also... Okay, okay. Uh, so let me, just, let me just play this back. So in the match this morning, mm -hmm. what I told Michael... Peter was my understanding was because we have discussed this on the rules committee. Like this is not the first time this come has come up because it came no. up in round one in match one of the first round of the tournament. No. And we discussed it in the committee. And my understanding from discussing it was from the committee was what I explained to Michael this morning. And that was, if that's wrong, it's wrong. But what I explained was my understanding is when you cast the uh, transmute, you have to sacrifice a creature, right? Um, and, and well, when, creature when transmute creature. resolves, okay. So you cast that. transmute. It's not mana drained. It's not counterspell. Right. It then resolves, and 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 then you sacrifice the creature, and that when that creature hits the graveyard, you get whatever the casting cost of that creature is. So in the case of Suchi, you get. Four, but Suchi also has its own trigger. You, you've mixed it which, up, which says that when Suchi hits the graveyard, you get four mana. So you when mixed, Suchi you hits it up the graveyard, time. you get the four mana, and you yeah. get the four mana from the transmute from the casting cost. So you get eight mana. No, you're not. You're not okay. That's not exactly right. Um, that's okay. So the transmute artifact here. Let me see if I can pull it up. Um, because you're kind of confusing the part where you keep you say that twice like it hits the graveyard twice. You no, it doesn't hit the graveyard twice. No, but you said it. You said it once. So, so with Suchi, you, you're not the first four mana that you're talking about is the casting cost of the Suchi. Like that's not actually mana. It's just you're turning that Suchi into a new artifact, right? And like think of it like flavorful, right? So. Oh. Yeah. Uh, say I'm turning that Suchi into a Triskelion. A Suchi costs four, a Triskelion costs two, or it costs six, right? Okay, so you don't so actually get more. the mana. You don't so, get right. the mana. So you, don't, you, so you don't actually get the mana from the transmuting of one <laughs> artifact that costs four into another artifact that costs nine. You never get mana. You just right. get to cast, a, you get to put into play a card with equivalent mana cost, just like that. You swap them. If it's less, you can swap them. Okay, so more, Michael, in, in more this, you have to pay the difference. Right. So Michael, so, in the scenario this morning, Victor had three islands, and he had a workshop and a swamp, and he had played the two. No, well, that's no, no. He had a he didn't have a workshop. He had um he had four lands. He had a maze of it. He had a maze of it. Yeah, a swamp yeah. in, in three islands. Right, right. Okay, so he tapped the two islands. He transmuted the Suchi. He has one island and one swamp and one maze of it untapped. And he believed he added the four mana from Suchi to go into the graveyard plus the four mana transmute. And then he paid the one swamp difference. Yes, that's what so, he did. So that was wrong, according to what you guys are telling me. He could not have played Colossus. No. Correct. Not enough mana open to play the Colossus because he'd used two to cast a spell. Right. So um, how do you explain this in a rules version? Could, Michael, could you take a crack at at typing this up and explaining? Because in my mind, well, it, it, makes, it seems to make sense that the way we played it this morning on the surface appears to be correct. Well, the the thing the thing that you're missing, right? Is that the Suchi doesn't the Suchi 
has an ability, right? The ability is put four mana in your mana pool when it goes to the graveyard. But what you're missing is that ability does not resolve until after transmute is done because transmutes the one putting it into the the graveyard right so if you think about like say i cast diabolic edict on you right you have to sacrifice the suchi right well when diabolic edict resolves that's when the suchi goes to the graveyard right and then it puts mana in the pool do you see what i'm saying so that's a very simple, like Diabolic Geek is a very simple, you sacrifice a creature, right? Something happens, right? Okay, like, so so if you were to write this up in a rule and make a, quote, special note, you've seen how what we have done in that rules section is we've had rules and we've had, you know, for example, tapped creatures do no damage, mana burn is in play, no errata, you know, there are rules and then there are special notes. And the special notes are clarifications on the rules. If you were to write a clarification, a special note on transmute and Suchi, I would could you take Suchi, a crack at writing that for us? Okay, on I wouldn't I would not touch transmute. What I would say to Suchi is uh the uh, the four mana is an ability, right? It's an ability. Four mana of is an ability. Okay. It's an ability of the card, right? So in order for you to get the four mana, well, ah, I have to come up with some some way to write it. Yeah, I mean, this is right. the normal rules of magic, yeah. right? Like, can I point out why this is so tricky? So yeah. if you, if you read the actual, so the two things that are really important to understand here is the printed text and the oracle text. And the printed text says, um, let me get it here. Sorry, the printed text. I have one right here. It yeah. says uh, transmute artifact. It says search through your library for one artifact and immediately place that in play. Also choose any artifact in play that you control and place it into its owner's graveyard. Now, if you stop there, to most people who read it, they feel that those two things have happened in the order that they're written. So right. it feels like, all right, one card has gone to the graveyard and one card has gone into play. And so I ought to be getting the four mana because one card has gone to the graveyard. That's why it's tricky there. The And then the rest of the spell is not really such a big deal. I, the rest is just covering about mana cost and ping it. The right. problem is from the oracle text. And the way the oracle text reads, so this is, in, is card text, and it starts in, in the order it's meant to be, sacrifice an artifact. Right. If you, and this is not how it was written back then. It's not how it's written on the card, but it's how it's been clarified. Uh, so you sacrifice an artifact. If you do... Search your library for an artifact. So now the sacrificing of an artifact is a cost, is part of the cost of casting the spell. That's the way it's written. If that card's converted mana cost is less than or equal to the sacrificed artifact mana cost, put it into the battlefield. And if it's greater, you must pay the X difference and such and such. Um, but again, even though now the card's casting cost is sacrifice an artifact, the ruling is still that the sacrifice an artifact is an effect of the spell and not a cost. It's been clarified. Just so you know, it's clarified here. It says not a cost, which means it happens as the spell resolves. If the transmute artifact is counted, you do not have to sacrifice the artifact. So, right. it, yeah. so the problem in both cases, the printed or the oracle, is that the wording is not written in the way the card is meant to be played, and that there's rulings about it many, many times. No matter how, and so no matter how you read it in the old way or how it's been clarified in the oracle text, neither is exactly how the card's meant to be played. I think the important thing, the, the thing to clarify is that it, it would be transmute artifact and you have to clarify and write that um, the artifact being sacrificed, the fact it going to the graveyard, no matter what it is, whether it's Suchi or any other card, it going to the graveyard only occurs upon the resolution of the spell. That's the clarification. It right. occurs with the resolution of the spell, so you never have to worry about whether it's an ability or anything. Whatever card it is, if it has an ability, only happens once the spell is over. Yeah, I guess you just put uh, you as a clarification to transmute artifact. You specifically state Suchi, uh, the example of Suchi. Sure. Uh, it uh, the sacrifice is part of the resolution of the spell. Uh, for example, if you sacrifice a Suchi, right, you will you will use its four mana uh, casting cost. Um, uh, 
but you will not get the but it but Suchi's ability will not resolve until after transmute finishes resolving. Yeah, and you better have a place to put that four mana when you're done. <laughs> you yeah, right. <laughs> it's like it's not it's a terrible combo, man. I built my deck around this combo that doesn't work. Like I'm very aware of this. Right, right. I mean, like there's a reason I have uh, uh there's a reason I have clay statues in my deck. Oh my god, it's uh, oh clay statue. Because yeah. You pay two to regenerate it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a bad word in Mishra's uh, factory. I didn't, again, I, I built my deck before I really understood the rules. So, uh, uh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I did it. So I have some Mishra's in there. And, um, you know, if I built my, my sideboard better, I probably would have had a bunch of flying men and I would have put them into Suchi if I felt like I was going to have problems with Suchi. Yeah, uh, my sideboard is really three cards. Every other card in my sideboard, I haven't boarded in. <laughs> I haven't boarded. Yeah. So what, are, you, are you still in the tournament, uh, Michael? I am. I don't know how, but I am. Oh my god! Where, I, I want to look up your deck. Can they do mine? What What are you playing? Like, uh, I'm playing shops. What's shops? Uh, I'm Mishra's workshop. Oh, you're playing workshops. Yeah, you're on a similar deck, right? This deck is not all that different from yours, Peter. Michael, yeah, Peter, I think your deck is better, except that you have not four useless cards. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! I have, 40, I have eight useless cards. My sideboard has. Four abyss and four swamp, which I will never play because whose creatures am I really like afraid of? Right. Like, um, by the way, I don't see your deck in here. I see you go straight from deck pick number two to four. Where's number three? Uh, it's there. It's at the bottom. It's it's in like some. Oh. It's okay. nested in somebody's it's comment. Our, oh, cool. So you, okay, so you have a tog. Yeah, my deck is a ham sandwich though. Like it's really not that good. No. <laughs> It's amazing. That, well, I feel like the same way, man. I'm amazed. Wait, wait, wait. Like, the seen. boomerang, though, isn't boomerang? It was. It, I felt like I cut boomerang from my deck initially, but now I so wish I had it. It's such a good card. Yeah, yeah. Like again, if I were to rebuild my deck from the ground up, it would be mono blue. Mono blue is. I built a mono blue. I made three more decks now, and one of them is a mono blue just for fun. Yeah. And uh, it's it's definitely an amazing. Uh, concept just mono. What I put in mono blue anyway, I don't remember exactly, but just it has so many great flyers, you have so many low cost of stuff, you can counter everything all the time. Yeah, I mean, just having access like the antiquity set having access to mana drain is like kind of yeah. busted. It is. Um, well, so we, we, we discussed this today. My position here was yeah. that there are no flat counter spells, right? There's no Counterspell, there's no power sink, and there is uh uh what's that one? Soul remove soul there's, remove soul. There's force spike. Uh, force spike. You got uh, I got four spike today. It was hilarious. Yeah, I got, got four spike very effectively by Robert Manzini. Yeah, <laughs> I saw the four spike and it was it was important, it was critical. It was he very forced, critical. It really was. He, he yeah. force spiked a Triskelion, and then Triskelion went to the graveyard for one. Yeah. There's also but, flash um, counter. You know, there's flash counter. There's a void. There's a void state which can counter um, an enchantment or yeah. an instant. Yeah. And that's not to be discounted because that's a one mana counter spell. That you talking about the green one? Yeah, yeah, that's a great spell. What's that spell called? A void fate. And I think the deck that has yes. it in there. I'm telling you, it's very good. Yeah, yeah void fate's very good. So, but that's all that said, point. you've got boomerang, you've got remove soul, you've got yeah. force spike, and you've got flash counter. Okay, there's not hardly any instance in this in this format other than divine offering. Uh, de detonate, there's detonate. Okay, there's like, detonate. Is worse, detonate is a sorcery. Detonate, detonate's not an instant; it's a sorcery. Okay, it's an okay, it's an instant. Flash but counter only counters an instant. It's, okay, um, artifact blast. Is uh, artifact there is artifact blast, but that's red. It's red. Okay. okay, we're talking about blue. We're talking about mono blue counter spells. Yeah. Now my position is. I don't want to. I don't think we should restrict mana drain because it will neuter b mono blue. <laughs> well, I, that's like saying I don't. I I don't think we should neuter the best deck because it's the best deck. Well, is it the best board. deck? It's also a side color. Like, why would you? One, he, okay, uh, Michael. Yeah, your, your theory is duly noted. Yeah. We can take the framework, the draft framework. We have the deck list now. It's already been exported from Teleria. It's in CSV. We have the deck pictures as well. Nick has uh, issued the policy of once we get to top eight, he publishes the decks, which 
You know, right. I don't know if I agree with that policy, but that's the way it's been done in other formats. And Nick yeah. has continued that tradition. I mean, I, I kind of think you should not know what your opponent is playing going into your finals, but that's a different argument. The, the, well, point, the point I, I'm trying to make here is that we can take the deck uh, lists. They're in CSV. We can analyze it in Excel or, or Google Sheets. We can take the deck pictures and we can run some analysis and we can see how many of the top four and top eight decks had four mana drains. I guarantee it won't be that many. I mean, I can look at it right now. You, you can look you know, at it right now. That's yeah. a good point. But all the top deck, every deck, almost without exception, has a I'll, I'll bet you five bucks that all top eight decks did not have four mana drains. Well, I mean, but that's, yeah, that, I mean, that's true. But, but I will bet you that half of the top eight decks had four workshops. Uh, I will take that back. <laughs> it's probably, it's exactly, five bucks. <laughs> I think it's exact. I think you're probably exactly right. I didn't count them, but that's probably true. But again, I, if, yeah, I, have, not, I have not looked at the deck pictures uh, seriously because I've been too busy fighting trolls and uh, you know fucking. Uh, yeah. you know, I'll make you another bet, but on the same way, you could say like, I bet you four of the top eight decks have fell or stone. Oh, you, you you're you're getting boned because somebody only has three workshops and one. Oh. <laughs> he's just like no not going for four he <laughs> even he even proxied two of them so it's not like he, he oh, no. like, didn't own them right yeah, yeah. all right michael i guess i owe you five bucks <laughs> but you know my point was my point was i hope you take my point right my point was i just did a gut guess that half of the top eight decks would have four workshops but not all of the top eight would have four mana drains how many of the top eight have four mana drains i got four uh well but i play blue that's the reason so so we got a we got a deck that's got two mana drains in it yeah i'm talking about four i, I understand that but like who so you have two like mana drains that's dumb well you have you have okay so you have two tax tower decks right that don't play blue at all right I so agree. um and then you have uh he's got four mana drains so you've yeah, got but a, i'm just shocked that there is a deck it's running two mana drains and not four. That's uh, funny, right? That's hilarious. <laughs> Who would do that? Why and, uh, Rob? Rob? Rob's not playing any mana drain, although he could. If he well, wanted. Rob is not playing mana drain because it's double blue, and Rob right. relies on one blue for most of his actions. But there, there are more mana. I, th I think there is only one more workshop than that. now. I think there are more mana drains than workshops. Okay, <laughs> and if that's the case, then my bet was wrong. That was basically my bet. My bet was there's going to be more workshops than mana drains in the top eight. That was basically but, what I was but here, here's here's the real problem, right? The mana drains are mostly in workshop decks. Okay. <laughs> now, 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 what we discussed this morning when when I showed you the draft framework was we can solve this as a rules committee by applying the points system, and the points system is is twofold. It has two goals. Number one, try to imitate or replicate which cards you had access to in the back in the day based on things like how difficult it was to trade for. Could you get your hands on them? I mean, I remember in 94, like a mox was 300 bucks back then, you know, or 95 or 96, somewhere around there. I mean, I didn't, yeah, I didn't start acquiring moxes until I was in college. I've never acquired any moxes in my whole freaking life. Um, I have some collector's edition ones, but only because... I won an uh, international collector's edition set as a first prize for a tournament. I was so mad. I threw it in my closet in the box and got pissed off because <laughs> it was worthless. I couldn't yeah. use it, you know, but I could not. I was making minimum wage in 1995. I could not trade for a mox. Nobody would trade me, you know, 50 Wrath of Gods for a mox. Um, and nobody would. I couldn't come up with $300, so I couldn't get a mox. Um, or maybe moxes are 100 and Lotus was 300. Maybe that's what it was. Something like that. But the point is, I got my hand on Mana Drains. I got my hand on um, Jihad. I got my hand on Library of Alexandria, for crying out loud. And I traded for these cards. I would trade 10, 15, 20 well, cards. Yeah, Library was like 100 bucks for a really long time. Right. It was very low compared to Moxes. And so I probably traded like, you know, five dual lands, some Wrath of Gods, a couple of Balance, you know, whatever it was at the time. And threw in a bunch of like, you know, commons and uncommons to top it off. 
and somebody gave me a, a very very heavy played damage library you know i could i could i remember doing that trade myself when i was broke making minimum wage but i could never get a workshop i could never get my hand on um on moxes i could never get my hand on lotus so the the the, the one side of this rule the intention like our, our our earnest desire is can we create the point system so that it imitates what was accessible and what wasn't and then is that the, what the point system is meant to do is to imitate the scarcity. well hold on peter let me finish that's the first goal of the point system the it second is. goal of the point system is to balance the power of the format but not and this is very important not kill the power we don't want to kill the power because it's you know it's really fun to have these games where you're down to the life difference is only one or two points and every game turns on every turn you know your turn i think i'm gonna win my turn i think i'm gonna lose you know your turn something happens my turn i you know like the the 180 the back and forth of this particular format as we've played these games is so fun it's the best so my, my 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 guess right is like these enchantment based tax tower decks are are like i mean the problem with the enchantments is there is no way to deal with them right that's, like not, once that's not entirely true michael i beg i beg to i beg to interject one of the reasons i decided to play red or sorry black and green was because with my black and green deck, I had access to pivotal cards. And I did some deck testing, and I played Peter like 20 times, and I only won twice against his deck. His deck was almost unbeatable for me. But what I found was four Argothian Pixies was a must. Mm -hmm. um, having a Sylvan Library and three or four Concordant Crossroads was basically a must. Having um, one or two Revelations in my sideboard was a must. Having four Desert Twisters was a must. And I was able to top off my deck with things like Juzum Jin. Earlier versions had um, had Urg Raiders. Earlier versions had um, a Fallen Angel. But I was able to top off my deck with these artifact and enchantment defenses that green provides. Plus four crumbles. You know, um, and I had... I was only I was the number nine in the top eight. I don't know if you saw that, Michael, but I slid in at number nine on top eight, only because um, I just got romped two and zero in one game where um, I, I played badly. I made some play errors, and I admitted that on this on my my, my video. And, ready, by the way. You know, I made some mistakes, and my opponent uh, basically played perfectly. Like my opponent played. He, he made no mistakes and played perfectly. So I lost by my own fault, not not because of my deck. I so mean, your, your point was you can't get rid of these enchantments. For one green, I can kill any, um, you know. Yeah, enchant, uh, enchant world. world. But, like, but like enchant world is very limited, right? Like you have, uh, well, one, the, the uh, tax edge is an enchant world. But if that thing resolves, you're dead um yes if tax if, edge resolves it's game over you're right but it's a yeah. combo it requires it basically requires it's a it's almost a three card combo it re basically requires land tax ivory tower so you can survive and um land's edge well okay i can tell you that i'm looking at the two tax tower decks that okay made top eight yep they're both misbuilt for oh. sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is tournament yeah. number one. Look, first Tech, can you just see if Stephen got your message of where to go? Because he's ready, but he doesn't seem to be getting my messages. Uh, well, well, he probably doesn't have me as a friend on Facebook. I have messaged him. Tell him to go to his Facebook messenger or just give him the link. Copy and paste this yeah, yeah. link. Copy and paste this link into your um, yeah, yeah. into your message to him. Because if, if I'm not his friend on Facebook – it won't pop up my message to him. I sent him the link. Okay. All I'm right. So, done. so, so, Michael, we appreciate you jumping in, man, and we oh, appreciate you, um, you know, uh, handling things with such grace this morning. As I, um, you know, fucked your game. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Like you know, the good guys won in the end. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say one, but frankly, you you probably should have won two and zero. Oh. Yeah. Um, 
And if, if, if it comes down to it, Michael, and you end up in like third or second or fourth when you should have been first, I will make it right for you prize wise. All right. Thanks, man. I, I, I appreciate it. I mean, I have a I have five thousand dollars worth of prizes <laughs> sitting in my house right now. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I have the ability to make it right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And plus we we now have a new member of the team that can, you know, help with the rules, which we really uh, appreciate, man, so much. Yeah, no, like I think it's I think it's cool. I just um, like I, I I I think that like your format is interesting from like a thought from like a like a thought process. Um, I just we'll see. I, I I'm actually kind of on board with what Rob was saying earlier, which was you don't want to make too many changes all at once. Right. Um, so if you do want to start like with abandoned restricted list, yes. Like maybe what you do is instead of like you start pointing stuff, like maybe for tournament two, you just like you you just add a couple things. Right. So right. incremental, like slow incremental change instead of like drastic change. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I I agree with that too. Yeah. Um, all right. So it looks like uh, I'm gonna I, I, by the way, I recorded this discussion. I think it would make for an interesting you know, uh, nightcap video <laughs> to, okay. to top off this morning's video uh, where okay. I screwed everything up and I feel so bad. Um, but I just want to, um, you know, I'm going to stop this video and looks like before we start, we're going to start the match for Steven and Peter.